is going to cover building the Nano Tennis Kit. And Nano Tennis is a game that I came up with to um, kind of teach the basics of electronics. Um, to teach the basics of electronics and microcontrollers in a way that I, I thought would be uh, fun to have something at the end. And basically what, what's going to happen is you're going to have two buttons and you push, push a button and the lights are going to come across and you're going to push the next button and the lights will come back across and you push the buttons back and forth to send the lights back and forth and when um, the light goes to the end and you don't hit it at the right time it'll flash and say oh I'm sorry um, you lose. So Nano Tennis, uh, most of the logic of the game is actually in the Arduino, in the code for the Arduino which I've already programmed and you're just going to load the program onto there. But there's two basic circuits that we're going to use. The first one you learned about in the uh, starter kit. Now the starter kit is not actually required uh, for this build. Um, the Nano Tennis comes with a extended breadboard for you to use, but um, I recommend that you start with that because it has a lot of important information about how to use the breadboard and uh, problems that you may run into that will be useful. So you should start with the starter kit even though it, it doesn't require any parts from it. So um, you'll come, your kit will come with a variety of LEDs of various colors. And you know, each kit may have slightly different colored LEDs. That's part of the fun. Um, so you should have five LEDs. And these LEDs are going to represent the ball as it goes uh, um, back and forth. So here we have um, two reds and three greens, and it doesn't really matter how we put them in, um, but we're going to put them in, we're going to point the positive leg, which is the longer one, to the left. So we're going to just put these, we're going to space these out on the board. Um, we're going to leave some room on the left and the right for buttons, but always put the positive long leg on the left. So we're going to put these in here. Space these out approximately. That's pretty good. And so it'll start and we'll push our buttons back and forth to send the ball back and forth. Now, um, LEDs, uh, if you just stick a voltage across them, they will blow out. They require resistors um, to make sure that there isn't too much current going across them. So um, this kit, gives you seven one kilo ohm resistors. So we need five of them for our button. So we'll wire them to the uh, negative side of the LED. And really resistors can go on either side, but just so we're consistent, we'll stick them on the negative side. And each LED will get its very own resistor. Actually, we can move. So when you have a resistor that's there to prevent overcurrent situations, it's called a current limiting resistor. So it's a, not, not a real fancy name, but it, it tells you what you need to know. Okay, so each of these are in the same row as the negative leg of the LED. And now we need to attach the resistor to the, um, to the ground, like that. So each of these resistors we will send to the ground. These have to be in the same row 
as the resistors so that they're connected. And this will be the final destination of the current when it lights up the LED. You might be thinking, what about the positive side of the LED? What runs the positive side? Well, the positive side of the LED is actually run by the Arduino itself. The output pins from the Arduino will, um, when they go high, they will turn on the buttons. So um, the output pins are from uh, D5 to D9. So if you look on this, you can find D5. So that's probably like that for you. So D5 is right there. That's D5, D6, D7, D8, and D9. So those will be connected to our LEDs over here. Okay. So, um, D5 will be our nearest one. D6 will be next. These go to the positive side, the long leg of our LEDs. So this will be D7. And if you can see this, I'm kind of staggering these, pin, uh, these wires over here. And the only reason I'm staggering them back and forth is so there's more room. Otherwise, they get really crammed in there. Um, the only thing that matters is that they're on the, the correct little half row coming out of the pen. So then I try to save my longer wires for these last two. D8, go here. And then D9, and go here. So now all of my LEDs are wired up to go to um, my Nano. Okay, so there's a pet. So the electric current goes from the output pin on the Nano through the wire to the LED. The current is limited by the resistor, and the current comes out. Um, to the ground. All right. So now what we need to do is wire up the buttons. So we've got two buttons, one for each player. And remember, buttons, basically what they do is they control current going through them. So if, they're, if the button's down, then there's a connection between the two legs. Now if the button's not pushed down, there's no connection. Okay, so we'll put these on our board. And so we will have what might be obvious to you is we'll have a positive connection because basically what the buttons will do, the way the buttons read on the Arduino is the Arduino doesn't actually know if a button is being pushed. All the Arduino knows is that it's getting a, a, a positive voltage or it's getting no voltage. That's the only thing the Arduino actually knows. But we, the way that we use the buttons is we use the buttons to control the amount of, um, to control whether or not that voltage is high or low. So we'll connect positive to our button. So see we've connected positive to our button and then we'll connect another wire from here to our Arduino inputs to tell us, which will tell the 
the Arduino whether or not there is someone pushing that button. This goes to D2. This button a bit, bit. And on this button, we'll go from positive to the button. And then from the button to D3. Okay, so these are the two buttons. Now, this is not all we need for the buttons. We also need See what happens is when so when you push the button that definitely creates a positive voltage to the Arduino. But that is not all we need because when we let go of the button, we actually haven't given it a negative or a zero voltage, we've given it an unknown voltage. If there's nobody pushing this down, a lot of that positive stays in the wire. It's not consumed by the Ar by by the nano. Um, so what happens is we need to find a way so that when we let go of the button that the potential drops to zero volts. And the way you do that is with what's known as a pull down resistor. So what we want to do is we want to tie this button to ground when it's not being pushed. So that way that this input will be at zero volts when this is not pushed. But if we were to use a wire to do that, if we directly connect a wire from this side to ground, then um, when you're pushing that button, it would create a short circuit from the, through the button to ground, and that wouldn't be good. So what we do is we put in a resistor. And so what the resistor will do is when there's no current flowing, um, the resistor will bleed off any um, excess potential and send it to ground. So we'll put in this resistor here and it goes to ground. But when we're pushing the button, this resistor creates enough voltage that this is still a positive voltage. All right. So we'll do the same thing to the other side. So this is known as a pull down resistor. And make sure that you always have a valid value coming out of your buttons. And then uh, we'll tie that to ground. So that's the entirety of our circuit building. So that we only had really two types of circuits in this. We had a current limiting resistor to make sure that our LEDs don't have too much current in them. And then we had a pull down resistor to make sure that when you let go of the button, that its value returns to ground, that it's not left in some unknown state. That's really the only two circuits we have. The rest of the logic for this game is gonna reside on our nano microcontroller. So the one other piece of this is that um, we also need to connect um, our power rails to the power that's coming out of the nano because our power, the nano is actually providing our power so we're, it's being powered through the USB port, and the nano itself is going to provide our ground and our positive power. So we're going to need a wire. There's a ground button. It says GND. And so we're going to connect um, a wire from GND to our negative power rail. And then there's one that says 5V, and that's 5 volts. And we'll connect that guy to our positive power rail. Now we only use, see we've got those connections there. We only use the power rails on this side for this project. If you wanted to connect both, um, if you wanted to connect both sides, we could also hook wires from positive to positive over here to activate this rail, but we don't really need it for this one. So let's uh, load up the program for that. So we're gonna plug in our Nano. 
excuse me while I plug this guy in. So now we're going to go to our Arduino. And if you go to sketch and then include library and manage libraries, you go to a search and you search for eventually. It's the name of a library I built. And uh, you'll see that in mine, I've already got it installed. If you didn't already have it installed, there'd be an install button. And if you click it, it installs the library. And that library comes with an example program. So after you install it, you go to File. Then you go to Examples. And you go all the way down here to um, oh, all the way at the bottom to eventually, and eventually has tennis game. And tennis game, that's our the game part of our nano tennis. So you click that, and it will open up a new window, which is the code for our tennis game. So I'll make the window a little bit bigger. And so if I hit the check mark, It'll verify that this is correct. And then if I hit the upload button, it will upload that to our Arduino. So now the Nano has a uh, copy of the program. After you upload it to your Nano, the game is ready to play. So you hit this button. It sends it across, and since I'm not going to hit the button on this side, it's going to say, oh, you messed up, we're starting again. So it's going to wait for me to push the button. I'm going to push the button. I'm going to come over here. When the ball gets right there, push it again, it's going to send it back. It's over here. Push the button, and it's going to send it back. So that is Nano Tennis. Now you can actually, there's a few parameters you can set. Um, for example, the ball speed, um, that's the number of milliseconds that it waits between uh, when it shifts the ball. And so we can make the ball go faster by decreasing the amount of time that that spins. So if we upload that again, now our ball, once it finishes uploading, our ball will move much faster. All right. So that's the Nano Tennis game. I hope you enjoy it, um, and I hope you learned a lot from it.